in a balanced portfolio at the top, we will typically push them off and they will begin fresh again. So the system is no longer rendering the services that it should for us. But in the ideal world, unfortunately, it does not exist. In the world of 2013, unfortunately, these prime applications, they become what we term as mature applications. They're serving their needs. They also become hit with Alzheimer's and they become senile applications. So they're serving the need, they're dealing with the organization's daily crunch. We sometimes feel that as a department, maybe they're not serving our needs and we'll go off and find out you know, the next best application. We'll try and kill them off and they become like zombified applications. They are like the living dead, as you, you know, as many would term it as. You can put a stick in their, in their heart and they'll still pop back up and be alive. And, and so these applications, as far as what we've you know, researched in many of these organizations, there could be as many as six. Six enterprise content management repositories that exist in a lot of organizations. And you notice there's no arrow that's going off. They just get accumulated in the organization. And so what do we do with that? The typical challenge is the following. Enterprise content management, in short, ECM, will be fading, as you see. But not fading as what you see, they're becoming invisible. So progressively, enterprise content management is what is known as impacted by the world of BPM, orchestrating all these different processes and workflow, will be hit by the nexus of forces. These are four driving forces. They are not independent of one another. They are collaborative forces of social, mobile, information, and cloud. And these four forces will be driving the behaviors of what we see in the enterprises of a lot of your organizations. You know, there was a, an article that came out not too long ago. IIT graduates of Bombay, they were interviewed by a mega vendor. When they collide, they will create a pattern. And these patterns would be very much what you would see, like the following. You see a juxtaposition. Workers who choose their technology versus organizations that are defining the technology roadmap. You also see that it's about being a contextual delivery mechanism. I want to be rendered the applications that are relevant to my role at this point in time, and that may change tomorrow and the day after. And so these systems have to become very smart in that it's all about choice and flexibility. It's also about being autonomous, being able to deliver what I need in real time. And so with that, monolithic systems will be the thing of the past. These are three key issues that I'd like to discuss. The first of which is about the transforming market that is under pressure by these four forces of the nexus. This is a geographic footprint of what's happening across the world. If you look at the very mature region of North America, they've done a lot of work in this, in this space. It accounts for 49%. But you also notice that the big little bubble in blue, which is the compound annual growth rate, is projected to be very small. So there's not a lot that you can do in those regions. Whereas in the, in the emerging Asia-Pac region, which is where we're sitting in, part of India, there's not a lot of work that has been done, and so there's a lot we can do in the road ahead. And so what can we do about it? This is a survey that we conducted of mobile phones. As you can tell, that mobile phones and smart gadgets are hitting a trajectory. Just a quick show of hands to show the reflection here of the sorts of devices that you guys own. Maybe a quick show of hands here. How many of you have a smartphone with you on hand? Quick show of hands. Keep it up. How many of you have more than one phone? Keep it up. Have a tablet as well? And also a desktop. So notice there's a prevalence of multiple devices that we have to deal with. So the rendering of these applications have to be smart enough to be able to detect the device that you are using. And the multiple devices that you own as well, because they may be of different real estates and form factors, but we're also saying what's important here is that, that new skills will have to be developed. And by that, application budgets for mobile 
rendered services are the least in organizations. They are in traditional applications versus that of mobility. So we will have to prepare for the road ahead, given that the prevalence is the choice of that device is really on you. This will also be that the consumerized applications will be what you choose to use on these devices. So the enterprise no longer controls what you use on the device, and they will obviously have to embrace what they choose. And so you see that the evolution of BYOD, bring your own device, would be the fact that BYOA will be very prevalent, as well as BYON, which is about bringing your own network. And all these driving factors will mean one thing, that ECM will have to reinvent itself. It's no longer about checking in and checking out the document. It's no longer about the fact that, hey, I put something here, have a look at it. We find that in the world today, and very common, based on these consumerized applications, they are in a cloud, obviously in a public domain, obviously very insecure. A lot of users today working on sensitive information are putting them in these applications in the cloud, as you saw earlier on. So for example, Google Docs is an example. We're putting up stuff there, we're co-auditing and co-authoring in real time, we're editing it, we're no longer telling you where to go, what to do and what to look at. It's done in real time. And everyone is collaborating on that piece of document. It's being synchronized in real time, and that's the expectation. We also find that the rendering is going to be based on that device. It's no longer about creating the application for a device, which is no longer relevant. It has to understand what these devices are. And therefore, one of the key things is that while we're doing all of that, that single source of truth will continue to exist. And so the key thing here that we have to watch out for, it has to be as if by magic. You know, which is, for example, here we have the Indian Golden Tree. Um, so search, meta-driven, auto-completion, analytics will play an even greater role in orchestrating the synchronization and the invisibility of these processes, be able to preempt ahead of time such that these services can be delivered in real time in accordance to your needs. It's no longer enterprise, but easy CM, which is organizations, how can organizations leverage this change and drive business value, which is going to be quite difficult and it's a fundamental change. You notice that everybody here, maybe just a quick show of hands, how many of you here continue to use paper as a process based mechanism in your organization? Couple of you. Quick show of hands, you've transitioned paper into highly automated processes. Also a couple of you. And how many of you are in this invisible DCM? Good, you're not lying, that's great. And how many of you are here just for the dinner? <laughs> the matter of fact is that a lot of organizations will do what they need to do when the time is right. And so many organizations in this emerging age of Pan region, not just yourselves, including those in the ASEAN countries, or Malaysia, Philippines, Thailand, Vietnam, they too are beginning to transition off the world of a tangible piece of document into that invisible environment that's now digitized. And so you see the likes of imaging and capture, which has been a thing of the past in North America, now become important in these regions that automation of driving paper to digital and then subsequently into the world of you know, an invisible method of working environment which does not understand structure anymore. It's now about putting in invisibility by tagging them and presenting them invisibly without you foldering the environment and pushing out these services to you. And so we see three different patterns that will emerge or three different scenarios or use cases that you, as you might want to call them. First, the traditionalist personality. This traditionalist personality is common across all different countries today. Very common. It's a common ECM, the common model. We'll find that through 2017, risk adverse organizations will begin to embrace that of a more modern architecture. So one that is of paper into that of digital and providing regulated processes around it such that we can orchestrate a repeatable process. We also find that based on this model, which is managed by IT, 
will then begin thinking about how we can regulate these environments, put in more governance. I would say the number one, since I say it's a common problem across the board or challenge, the number one conversation that I typically have with these clients in Asia PAC is that how do I implement a governance policy or strategy? We have the systems, in fact, we have six of them, they're collectors of ECM technology. What can we do to consolidate this? What can we do to implement processes such that they're repeatable? We also find that they're moving from departments into the enterprise. A lot of the decisions have been made in the department level. Next, we have the fact that because IT is controlling a lot of what they decide, the enterprise users, they'll be losing control and losing that grip, just as you would with a teenage child. As you would imagine, if you put control and choke his neck, it'll just slip over your hands. The second is the Wild West personality. This is the person that is all for embracing change. The person that says, yes, we'll use premium technology. Don't tell me what I should use. This is your teenage child. Let's look at some of these tools. And it's not because we want to marginalize IT, but because this is the way we work. And so what can we do about this? There are obviously organizations, a lot of what you see in the, in the, in the Wild West personality is evident in North America. Not just North America, but even the fact that it has skipped this generation of traditionalists. You see Gen Y or millennials or the digital coming in to your traditional environments that we see this change happening. Even if you don't expect that you want this to happen, they are happening. So what can organizations do? Quite simply, you see, even the Emerging Asia Pack, they're introducing the concept of MDM, mobile device management, where we can regulate the control of the device. We tell you, yes, if you want to use these applications, we will sandbox it so that if you lose the device, we will wipe it out and it no longer is a threat to the organization. So you can go ahead and do that and you will integrate these processes into the organization and become part of the environment, introduce records management to circumvent some of the issues. The next of which is obviously the middle of the road, where we don't expect that there will be a lot of traditional organizations, nor the Wild West, that the meet in between will probably be the most logical approach, where we find that organizations are considering that cloud will be the way forward. And by that, Gartner has one of these top predictions. On a yearly basis, we write out top predictions of what is the road ahead. And one of which two years ago was about 2016, which is three years ahead, that more than 50% of private, sensitive information will be stored in public clouds. And two years ago when we said that, the number was already 30%. It was as high as that. Organizations are in fact archiving information to public clouds. Does it contain sensitive information? Sure it does. Organizations have individuals that tell you, by the way, I'm creating an RFP, go online and have a look at it and tell me what you think. Is that sensitive information? Sure it is. So organizations are very receptive to it from that perspective. And so we see that organizations will now have to balance. Should we really put it in the public cloud? Maybe not. Should we put it in the private cloud? Maybe yes. How does it balance with the on-premises deployments is the key thing. How do we introduce governance? How do we put around a measure or what we can archive if the provider that's managing our cloud infrastructure goes out of business is the key question that I get a lot these days. How do we go ahead and define what we should do? I think the first key thing that organizations really have to do is to think about where they are today. No one can really answer the question. Everyone wants to talk about the road ahead, five, ten years about in the road ahead, but they don't know where they are today. So Gartner also has a maturity model, a toolkit that helps you assess. And this is a two-axis model where you have the phases of maturity, one being the most immature, five being most transformative, versus that of the level of sophistication you might have or your immaturity. Based on this model, you find that in the first level, the initial stages of going about such an environment, you find that compli compliance is a painful process, obviously, because there has, no, there has been no regulation. You also find that projects will begin in small groups based on department levels. 
But what we're doing and what we're seeing is that a synergized roadmap of BPM and ECM coming together is also an immature phase of a very high maturity. Because what we really see is that it's about the invisible ECM, it's about that auto tagging, it's about that preemptive processes that are kicking in to discover who you are rather than creating this process on an ad hoc basis to really cater for the times. And being really transformative, you'll find that organizations will have analytical engines embedded as part of their implementations to discover the processes, to discover the individuals and who they are, and to discover how they work as individuals because an individual does change over time. And so this maturity gives you a foot forward to understand where you are today before you even move forward. The next thing is how should enterprises evolve your enterprise content management strategies? What are you doing around selecting these, around selecting 